Hi, this is Travis Shaw and Amory Paquette uh, coming to you with our last video here at the historic Mount Zion Church, this historic crossroads at the center of the Mosby Heritage Area. And right now we're standing in the cemetery behind the church. You know, a lot of the focus on the church during the Civil War is on the building itself. You know, it was used as a hospital, as Amory said. You know, there's surgeries going on there. A lot of the soldiers who were here left their names written on the walls of the church. There's Civil War graffiti that you can come and see today. It was also temporarily near the end of the war used as almost a holding cell for right. local citizens who were suspected of, of helping Mosby, of being pro-secesh, as they say. Absolutely. So it's a rendezvous point. It's a battlefield. It's a hospital. It's a prison. Um, this church, this location, sees a tremendous amount of use during the Civil War. And again, that's because it's located on that historic crossroads that we've been talking about all afternoon. But now we're standing in the cemetery behind the church, you know, another vital part of this historic landscape that's preserved here at the Mount Zion Park. Um, the church, uh, excuse me, the cemetery contains graves of veterans from almost every American war from the War of 1812 on. Um, there's markers you might be able to see in the background to those uh, federal cavalrymen who are killed here in that fight in July of 1864. Uh, one of the defining features of this cemetery, though, is what lies on the other side of this wall. Um, just like the church building, the cemetery itself is also segregated. Uh, during the 19th century. Inside the wall where we're standing now was the white section, and then both free and enslaved African Americans are going to be buried outside the wall. Yes, and of the burials that are on the opposite side of this wall here, only two are inscribed with the name um, of the person who is buried there. And it's interesting to note that there are burials taking place outside of these walls after the Civil War as well, suggesting that, you know, segregation, of course, didn't end with the end of the Civil War. Right, and over the last few years, a lot of work has been done to kind of better understand this area. They've done some ground-penetrating radar. Um, they found evidence for, you know, I think it's around 60 or 70 burials or potential burials that are unmarked in this location. And so in an effort to really tie that in with the historic narrative that's happening here, there's been a lot of work recently to clear the brush out of this area, to make it more accessible. There are now trails that lead through the historic African American Cemetery. And just this past year, a gate has been put into the wall to make it a little easier for visitors to travel between one section and the other. And I think um, the fact that we're on a historic crossroads here um, that idea really comes to fruition with the idea of preservation efforts as well. So whether it's the Northern Virginia Park Authority who is maintaining the church structure itself and some of this land, whether it is the nonprofit who's maintaining the cemetery, um, whether it's the Piedmont Environmental Council who is preserving the open landscape, um, both to the west of here and to the south of here where we have the old Carolina Road and there's a new property called Roundabout Meadows. And then of course there are folks like Travis and I with the Mosby Heritage Area who are out there trying to share the stories about these places and encouraging folks to visit. So of course what it comes down to is that this, this landscape is intrinsically valuable. The idea that for hundreds of years individuals have been traveling up and down this route through this area, they've been shedding blood here, they've been building lives here, and they've been building communities here, and we all have a part to play in that preservation and in that story sharing process. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, what we're really talking about when we're talking about local history is the stories of the people who lived here, the people who fought here, the people who traveled through this area, and a vital part of teaching that history is being able to actually take people, take visitors, take locals, to places like the historic Mount Zion Park, like the Roundabout Meadows, uh, and show them what the landscape looked like when these people lived here and when they traveled through here. You know, as I said before, how many opportunities do you have to stand on an 18th century road that goes back to a Native American road that goes back hundreds of years, thousands of years? Um, it really is part of what makes this area so unique and what makes it so important that we hold on to this landscape and that 
you know, organizations like PEC, Nova Parks, Mosby Heritage uh, help to preserve these for future generations. And of course, while we're talking up Mount Zion, um, it's probably a good opportunity to invite you guys to a talk here yes. next month. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. On uh, Sunday, March 29th, uh, Nova Parks and Mosby Heritage area are partnering for one of our Conversations in History programs. Uh, we will be here from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. We'll be talking a little bit of Revolutionary War history that day. Uh, Lord Dunmore and the coming of the revolution. So it's a great opportunity to come out, hear a great talk, and actually visit the site that we've been exploring this afternoon. So we hope you'll join us then. All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll officially sign off from the Mosby Heritage area. Please see it, save it, and pass it on. Thank you.